Hey Gophers, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into something every back-end developer needs to know, handling file uploads in Golang using multi-part upload. If you've worked with file uploads before, you've probably hit the limits of regular uploads. That's where multi-part upload shines. Let's break it down. So, what is multi-part upload? It's a way to send large files by breaking them into smaller parts and encoding them into a single HTTP request. Unlike regular uploads, multi-part uploads handle large files more efficiently, allow retrying individual chunks if something goes wrong, include metadata or extra fields along with the file. All right, now that you understand the what and why, let's get into the how. We'll build a server to handle multi-part uploads and a client to test it. I have structured the project into two separate directories, one for the server code and another for the client or uploader code. Let's look at the server. We will begin this simple net HTTP project. A Hello World API is already defined here. We are going to implement two APIs here, one without multipart and another with multipart. Before implementing file upload APIs, let's create a new controller file for this purpose. Let's define the handler for simple file upload. Now we will define the root for this. The API is upload and the handler is the one we just defined. Now, we will implement the handler. The first thing we need to do is limit the size of incoming requests. This prevents someone from uploading an excessively large file and abusing our server. Here, we define a constant max upload size set to 100 megabytes. Then, we wrap the request body using Max Bytes Reader to enforce this limit. If someone tries to upload a file larger than this, the server will reject it. Next, we need to pass the form data from the request. The PassForm method extracts the form fields from the request. If this fails, we respond with a 400 bad request error because the client likely sent malformed data. Now we retrieve the file name using the form value function. This expects the client to send a form field named file containing the desired file name. If the file name is missing, we return a 400 bad request error with a clear message so the client can fix their request. Next, we define a directory to store the uploaded files. In this case, it's a folder named Uploads. We ensure the directory exists, creating it if necessary. If that operation fails, we return a 500 internal server error to indicate a server-side issue. After that, we use join to create the full path where the file will be saved. Here we create the file on disk using os.create. If this fails, perhaps due to insufficient permissions or disk space, we again respond with a 500 internal server error. The defer close ensures that the file is properly closed once we're done with it. With the destination file ready, we copy the contents of the request body directly into the file using io.copy. This is where the actual file data is written to disk. If an error occurs during this process, like a network issue or a full disk, we notify the client. Finally, if everything goes smoothly, we send a 200 OK response along with a success message. The client will know their file was uploaded correctly and the file name will be included in the response. And that's it. We've built a robust file upload handler in Go. Next, we will define an API for multi-part upload. Let's define this handler function. This function will handle HTTP requests where users upload files using a multi-part form. 
Similar to the simple upload, we cap the maximum size of the uploaded files to 100 megabytes. Here, we're telling the server to pass the form data with an in-memory limit of 100 megabytes. The rest of the form will spill over to disk. If passing fails, perhaps due to incorrect form data, we return a 400 bad request error. Now, we grab the uploaded file from the form field named file using form file function. This function returns the first file for the provided form key. It returns multipart file file header, which contains metadata about the uploaded file and an error. If the file isn't found or there's an error, we respond with an error. We defer closing the file to free up resources once the function is done. Let's log some details about the uploaded file, its name, size and MIME type, so we can verify the upload on the server side. We'll save the uploaded file into a directory named Uploads. If the directory does not exist, we create it. If this fails, we respond with a 500 internal server error. We construct the full path for the uploaded file using the directory and the file's original name. This path will be used to save the file. Next, we create a new file at the destination path. If this fails, we return an error. We copy the content of the uploaded file into the newly created destination file. The file here is a multi-part file. If the copy operation fails, we send a 500 internal server error. Finally, we send a 200 OK status and a success message back to the client, confirming that the file upload was successful. Here we made a mistake. We have set the cap size of the uploaded files and the request body pass size are both set to 100 megabytes. If we do so, the multi-part functionality will never be used. Let's set this to 10 megabytes. This will make the server pass the form data with an in-memory limit of 10 megabytes. The rest of the form will spill over to disk. Now let's look at the form we are going to use to make requests to the server. This form does the regular upload. It calls the Upload API. This field is used to provide the file. This form is used for multipart upload. Here we set Enki type to multipart form data. The form looks like this. Let's start the server and give it a try. Now, upload the file here. I have selected a video file here. The API was successful. Here we can see the video is uploaded to the server. Let's try multi-part upload now. It works too. In the server log, we can see the uploaded file's name, file size and header. Now let's see how we can implement the client in Go that does multi-part upload. I have implemented it as a CLI tool. We define file flag, which users will pass the path of the file to upload. The default value is an empty string, and we provide a helpful description for users. Here we validate the file path. If the user didn't provide it, we log an error and terminate the program. Next, we open the file. If the file doesn't exist or there's another error, we terminate the program. Always remember to defer the file's closure to free up system resources. Now. We're building the body of the HTTP request. We initialize a bytes buffer to store the data. Then we create a multipart writer to handle the multipart formatting.
We create a new form field named file using create form file. The second parameter is the file name which the server can use for saving. Then, we copy the file's contents into this field using IO copy. Here, we finalize the multipart body by closing the writer. This ensures all the data is correctly encoded. Next, we create a POST request using new request. The request body is our buffer and we set the content type header to the form data content type generated by our writer. Finally, we use an HTTP client to send the request. If successful, we print the response status to confirm that the upload worked. Let's try this. We had success. And that's how you implement multi-part upload in Golang using NetHttp. You now have the foundation to handle uploads of any size, manage metadata, and even scale this for distributed systems. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button and subscribe for more Golang tutorials. Got questions or suggestions? Drop them in the comments below. Until next time, happy coding. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.